So the state of California is moving on gun control once again this year. One bill seeks to treat 80% lowers as something seizable during red flag confiscations, and the other bill seeks to tax ammunition and firearm sales more than they have before. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that the state of California needs to stop infringing on our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm in the state of California or elsewhere, I highly recommend you look into USCCA and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. So like I said in the intro, the state of California, once again, like every other year, is moving on gun control. One of these bills we're going to talk about, we've talked about prior on this channel, and it was initially when it was proposed and we didn't have any firm numbers, and that is the new firearms and ammunition tax. And there's also been some interesting new developments with that bill as well. The other one seeks to treat firearms precursor parts or 80% lowers, ghost guns, whatever you want to call them. It wants to treat them as firearms subject to seizure and actually restricting you from being able to purchase them if you are actually hit with an extreme risk protection order or a gun violence protection order or a red flag law in the state of California. However you want to call it, it's pretty much a red flag law here in the state of California. So the first one that deals with these firearms precursor parts or 80% lowers is AB 1057. And it was actually introduced by assembly member uh, Petrie Norris. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. Um, Co-authors, assembly members, Brenman, Gabriel, Levine, of course, uh, Quirk Silva and Stone. And this bill is pretty straightforward and simple and I'll link it down below. But what this seeks to do is just amend some language and treat these 80% lowers as actual firearms, subject them to seizure when you're going through the red flag law process in the city of California, and also prohibit those individuals who are going through the process from being able to purchase even 80% lowers. If you're not aware, the state of California passed a bill which ultimately made firearms precursor parts or 80% lowers subject to you having to go to a gun store or a licensed firearms precursor part vendor. You would have to go to this gun store vendor licensee um, and go through a background check process to actually purchase them and pretty much just treating them like firearms. This is also something that has been wanting to be done uh, federally, but the state of California already passed a bill. Um, so we are going to be subject to that. Now, initially when the original bill was passed, the date for that was I believe July 1st of 2024. Well, last year when the whole Title I issue popped up and them wanting to treat Title I firearms sold by Franklin Army or other things that you um, built out yourself as assault weapons in the state of California, they also tacked on a new requirement that pushed forward the uh, date requirement for these firearms precursor part vendor licensing and you having to go to these licensees to purchase it. So it went from July 1st of 2024 to July 1st of 2022. And since that date got pushed forward, now in the state of California, they want to treat these 80% lowers or firearms precursor parts as a firearm subject to seizure confiscation and also restricting you from purchasing if you are hit with a gun violence uh, restraining order in the state of California. Now, the other thing I want to talk about in this video, which we've talked about in a prior video, is the new bill which seeks to increase the firearm and ammunition tax here in the state. This is Assembly Bill 1223 or 1223, and it is authored by Levine, of course. And if you're not aware who Levine is, he is one of the perpetrators who is always promoting these gun control bills in the state of California. Now, again, I talked about it prior on this channel, I've talked about comprehensively what this seeks to do. And if you wanna watch that, you can click this tab right there and it'll take you to that video. But in that video, I talked a lot about some of the speculation because we didn't have the actual numbers yet on the actual taxation amount that they're going to try to seek to implement on firearm sales and ammunition sales. Well, in the new iterations of the bill, we got some new additional information. So as of July 1st of 2022, they are going to try to implement an excise tax of 10% for the uh, sale of handguns and then 11% for the sale of things like shotguns, uh, rifles, um, ammunition, and then firearms precursor parts as well, which we just talked about. And so another interesting thing that happened with AB 1223, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware, there was a recent shooting in the state of California. Well, after that, Governor Newsom came out saying that we need to implement more gun control in the state of California and nationwide. Well, on that tweet, then Levine actually tacked on there, which who he's the author of this bill, saying that he needs Newsom to get behind passing this bill right here um, because it's going to have a new tax. And then they're going to use that tax for gun violence prevention programs, which was the initial language that he proposed. Well, when he actually put out that tweet, as of that time, 
there was actually some crossed out language. So as the bill stands right now, it's saying gun violence prevention programs is going to be the beneficiary of these tax amounts that are going to be sent to the state of California. But at that time of Levine sending out that tweet, there was actually language in there that said that it was going to go to the state of California general fund, which caused a lot of uproar because he was saying one thing, but the bill at that time was actually seeking to take all that money that was going to be taxed to California gun owners, and then it was gonna be put in the California general fund for the state of California to use for whatever it wants. Well, because of all that uproar, my assumption is that when it went to the recent um, assembly review and it was amended, they took out that general fund language, they crossed it out and put back in the old language. Now that doesn't mean that if it goes through subsequent uh, revisions now after this, that it won't get changed back to the general fund, but it could have been that because of the general uproar about people saying, well, you're promoting this ammunition and firearms tax for gun violence prevention programs, but at that time it was actually language for the general fund for the state of California to use on whatever it wants. Um, maybe when some of that uproar dies down, they will switch it back. But as of right now, when you pull up the current iteration and as it was recently amended, as of, I believe, May 28th, they put back in the old language saying that they're going to use it for gun violence prevention programs. But again, could be subject to change. So that's just a quick update on two gun control bills that the state of California is trying to pass. Like I said, they're always trying to pass something every single year. But if you oppose this, I highly recommend you reach out to your local representatives. Let them know you do not agree with this and let them know you don't agree with uh, treating firearms precursor parts and, and making them subject to confiscation during red flag law processes. And also let them know you don't agree with the increase in ammunition and firearms taxation, because especially here in the state of California, we are already taxed on every single thing not just firearms related, but even like gas prices. I'm sure a lot of you guys in the state of California are feeling the heavy and high gas prices that we're facing right now. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure that, that notification bell because it helps your channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the second amendment, and also spread the word about 2A news like this that is going on in the state of California. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.